My name is Uit Chowdhury, I'm the Chief Executive of WebRoot Democracy, and I'll be chairing this evening's hustings with our mayoral candidates. Hi, um, my name is Elaine Bagshaw, I'm the Liberal Democrat candidate for Mayor of Tower Hamlets on the 3rd of May. My name is Rabina Khan, I'm the mayoral candidate for the People's Alliance of Tower Hamlets. I am a current sitting councillor and have been so for eight years. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kieran Jeb, uh, and I'm the candidate for the Tower Hamlets Mayor for the Green Party. Hello, I'm Dr Anwara Ali, uh, the Conservative Party's mayoral candidate for Tower Hamlets. Uh, John Biggs, Labour Party. So on environmental inequality, uh, one of the things that we want to do is make sure that um, parks are spread uh, throughout the borough and that it's not just that um, the wealthier parts of the borough uh, get that kind of provision. And we want to make sure that everything is accessible to people and also that the events that the council puts on in those parks are free and so that people can come and enjoy the parks as much as possible. And we also want to look at things like recycling. Um, Tower Hamlets has one of the worst recycling rates in the country and yet it's in richer areas areas that the recycling rate is a lot higher. So looking at why does that happen, is it ways like the way that our um, estates are built and the provision that's put in them and making sure that we're investing across the borough to make that as easy as possible for absolutely everyone. What I am keen to do is to make sure that young people and children and families are involved not only just in recycling but making sure that our environment is cleaner, it's fresher for us to live in. So one of my key um, pledges is to work with people to increase our recycling. In Bangladesh alone, with plastic bags are bad. Bangladesh um, communities, they know when they go to Bangladesh they can't use a plastic um, bag. So why they can't they believe that they can do this in this country? We can do this in Bangladesh. We can do this in this country. Tower Hamlets has some of the uh, most high parts of the UK, uh, and it's also got some of the most amazing green spaces in the UK. Victoria Park, beautiful wild cemetery park uh, that we're next to tonight. Uh, I think it's about uh, encouraging, particularly young people from the borough, that they can enjoy those green spaces. Um, it's, it's not a an area that they should be afraid to go. In terms of air quality, we have campaigned consistently and um, I hope that if you elect me on the 3rd of May that as your mayor, I will look at uh, building sustainable developments in Tower Hamlets where we have the right infrastructure, so creating more uh, green space uh, ambitiously uh, because as I say, there is a premium on green space in Tower Hamlets but being much more imaginative, um, extending the cycling uh, routes, uh, making sure that we have traffic calming measures so uh, Tower Hamlets side streets can be used in conjunction to upgrading the cycles, two super cycle highways, CS3 uh, and 2 that go through our borough. So we're a party which believes fundamentally in addressing the problems of inequality in our community and environmental inequality, uh, whether it's living close to a road in which you have to suffer poor air quality because you have no choice, or whether it's uh, in terms of the, your ability to buy uh, healthier foods and more sustainable lifestyle can be sustained through, a, through your income. In all of those ways we need to address the cuts in government benefits, we need to campaign for a Labour government in my view quite naturally, uh, but we use, need to use the council's powers to mitigate those things through such things as our poverty funding, through good planning policies, through ensuring that everyone is entitled to a good quality home, uh, whatever their income. Uh, as you know, we're here to discuss environmental issues in advance of the local council elections on May the 3rd. We're joined here by a number of the mayoral candidates. We've got Amara Ali from the Conservative Party, Elaine Bagshaw from the Liberal Democrats, John Biggs from the Labour Party, Karen Jeb from the Greens, and Rabina Khan from the People's Alliance for Tower Hamlets. The question is, will you take practical action to prevent plastic pollution from the council's operations and the premises and spaces you own? Will you collaboratively, collaboratively work with schools, businesses and the Environment Agency to reduce plastic pollution in our local authority, authority area? And John's question is, what would you do about takeaway styrofoam packaging? Let's start with John on this one. So, um, yeah, I'm happy to look at what other steps we might take as a council to minimise plastic waste. I think this does need, this needs a bit of legislation as well, because it feeds into the other question from John, um, who does a lot of good work on uh, Myland Park, uh, where one of their plagues is the plastic waste and the takeaway waste there. And uh, we can't force the retailers to 
to not use disposable containers of the types they use, but we, we would like to see, I'd, I'd like to see greater regulation which, which makes that harder and a responsibility to clear things up as well. Thank you. Actually, I think the reality of the matter is that we don't do enough to address plastic pollution. We have families who live in high block towers. How will they, as a council, how do we support them to address their um, the plastic recycling that they have at home? If you have a family of about six, seven people living in a two bedroom flat on the 17th floor, how does that family get access to recycling facilities? These are the questions as a council for consecutive administrations we haven't actually addressed. And the reality of the matter is, families who live there, they actually have the intention of wanting to recycle. And one of the reasons why they have that intention is they've got children who go to school who are involved in recycling projects, who, um, you know, I, I can speak about my own children and the friends of um, children as well. They're involved in recycling projects, building recycling robo, um, robots and all of that. But the point is, when you have seven people living in a tiny two bedroom flat, and the council isn't giving you that opportunity to be able to recycle. Where do these families put their recycling? If they put it outside, someone will put, um, put light to it. So as an elected member, I, I believe, and I believe that if I am elected, I'd like to give more opportunity to address the plastic pollution because I don't think it's been addressed properly because of the infrastructure and the things that we have in, in place. And it can be argued that we need money and the government is cutting. Well, actually, community infrastructure that we has produced since the 31st of December 2017, 37.49 million pounds. And we've got section 106 money of 100 million pounds. Some of it is unspent and some of that money should be addressing plastic pollution. For alternatives to styrofoam, um, there are lots of simple ones like cardboard, there are lots of slightly more interesting ones like vegetware, compostable containers, um, and lots of market stalls already use these alternative materials. So the fundamental question here is how would I as mayor shape the borough and how would I change people's behaviour. So going back to the recyclables we're saying, Tara Hamlet is one of the worst boroughs uh, amongst the 33 boroughs in recycling. You have to go to the seven points in the borough, seven idea stores, uh, with your ID. They need more ID than the banks do when you go to get your money out. So what I would do, number one, is a simple thing. Where do people go most of the time? Apart from when they do their big shopping, they go to their local shops. Why not talk to the local shop, shop owners like I was doing in Watney Market today, bring them on board and say, let's make it easy for our residents to recycle. So that's one of the things that I would do. Secondly, education, it's not just the poorest. Poor people and rich people is irrelevant of your, you know, how much you earn and what bracket you are in social class. Everybody in Tower Hamlet, there's a will to recycle. I've seen it as I've gone across the borough, both when I do uh, you know, house visits as a doctor, but also when I'm canvassing, people are recycling. We've just got to design the public realm, sit down with people and look how we can make it easy. There are so many other things that we could be doing. We could be looking at what Amsterdam does, what some of the, <coughs> the leading boroughs do in terms of their recycling. We can make recycling fun. We can make, put that on the agenda and champion it. And I think that's what I've seen that hasn't happened with the current uh, administration and, and the previous admission. Recycling and renewable energy hasn't been championed and we need to champion that from cradle to grave and that's what I would be doing. Um, Education is a really big thing for me on recycling. I think it's bonkers that if you go to different cities in this country and even just different boroughs in London that the recycling schemes are completely different. And um, again in Portsmouth one of the things they do is they have a massive sticker on the side of your wheelie bin that tells you exactly what you can and can't recycle. So doing things like that and also working with housing associations, people like Tower Hamlets Home, so that when people first move into the area they are given something which is very very clear about this is what you can recycle, this is the easiest way to do it and making sure that people do that. And um, It's terrible that so much of our rubbish ends up in landfill and um, we could do so much better um, and just working to make sure that we do. Uh, my name is Geoffrey June Nettle, resident and um, the question here is this. Five years ago a survey was done for all London boroughs. The London borough to hand spent less on it, the least on its parks and open space than any other London borough. The survey was done three years ago uh, <coughs> with the local uh, boroughs and once again to hand in the bottom of that for spending the least on its public parks and open spaces. The, the authority denies government regulations on invasive species. The authority denies the existence of potential hazards in its parks. And there's a festering rubbish rancid heap in Turing Street, which has been there for three years. The cats have been notified, and it just goes stronger. Which one of the new candidates on a local level 
we get a genuine policy organised whereby the people can be involved with the um, environment as it is this moment of time in Tower Hamlets. Yeah. Well, that just concurs with everything I've said earlier. Um, the Tower Hamlets environment policy was last written in 2007. So my first thing would be I would sit down and refresh it. And I actually got my manifesto here, which I'm going to present to friends of hers. And it's not something that we've just been talking about. We've actually been campaigning. And if I were to become your mayor, I would implement this. So this is my three-point plan. Yes, I say stop being sarcastic now. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, it's a list of things that we would do, and that would actually make our hamlets, our environments, and connect our parks and green spaces, reduce our waste. I would also like to mention that NBAC style uh, getting rid of um, our waste is something that is uh, done underground. And again, John Smith's a golden opportunity with all the new developments where he could have installed that. And I would be looking to install that because that would make Tarahamlas cleaner, greener, and leaner. So I'm going to take this opportunity to present this to you. Oh, um, sign from me if I become your mayor. Expecting a signed copy from everyone. And getting people to actually have a conversation and talk about what do we want the future of our parks to be? Are there better things that we can do around events? Um, how can we improve access to them? <coughs> and, and how do we make sure that facilities and equipment are actually um, good for local people in the area? Um, and making sure that we work together to make that happen. So, um, it won't surprise Jeff because we've had correspondence about this in the past that we don't recognise his figures. Um, across London, a lot of boroughs have slashed their parks maintenance budgets and ours has remained relatively solid. One of the ways we've done this, of course, which is not always popular, particularly in Bow, is by having some events in parks which generate income which help to offset the savings we make elsewhere in our budgets. I think the point you made about using the parks as a revenue generating stream I think that's something we need to be careful of, thinking about why the park is there in the first place. It's a public space. It's, I think, it's problematic when you close off large parts of that for a long time. Uh, and what happens to the, to the grass, to the trees, why that event is going on, takes a long time to recover and can leave the park a less pleasant place to be uh, for the rest of the summer. So I think we need to have a, uh, make sure there are um, strong regulations on how much that park is used. Why don't the, the um, uh, rubbish recycler, the dustmen who are picking up the bags, distribute the bags when they pick up the rubbish? Why don't they return it? Just a simple question that's very frustrating um, that it's not happening. You live in a, a tie block that has the um, chutes where you, you might not want to walk down five, ten floors, so you drop your rubbish down the chute. Why not make that a recycling chute rather than a waste chute? So just about making getting into people's heads that recycling should be the first option rather than the last option. Thank you for asking that question about the pink um, bags. Actually, the pink bags used to be delivered um, to the homes when they were picked up, and also the um, food waste bags, they used to be also given as well, which made life a lot easier, because I talked um, earlier about accessibility and opportunity for people to recycle. But if you take the opportunity away and make it even harder, then it puts people off from recycling. So, um, no, I don't agree with the fact that you have to go to the ideas and produce an idea and then bring the pink bags home. It's easier just to get it dropped off with along with the um, paddy bins and the food waste bags, and it encourages people to do this and people who live in high tower blocks you know across the buyer it really does help them to have that accessibility um, we would bring back um, the bag drop-offs and we'd get rid of this ridiculous requirement to hand over ID when you go and collect them. So our recycling rate is, is not dissimilar from those of other inner London boroughs. We're far worse than outer London boroughs where everyone has a back garden, you know, to stereotype it. And if you take out garden waste then, then that's the comparator. Uh, but we also have a problem which is experienced by most inner London boroughs where you have a lot of high-rise properties uh, and also where you have a lot of flats above shops, then the way people relate to their waste is more complicated. You see otherwise perfectly law-abiding people walking out their front doors in the morning in Bethnal Green with a little Sainsbury's bag and they go to the bin and just drop it discreetly there and make, make sure no one's looking. So waste disposal in converted flats is a problem, uh, waste disposal on high-rise estates is a problem as well. We're retendering the contract and uh, in the next year whoever's lucky enough to be the mayor will have the joy of putting that retailer together. Uh, my old mate Rachel, I mentioned already, has been consulting with people about this and we will get into a better place. We're somewhat constrained by the contract we currently have uh, and I think we can do better, but we're not going to get to the Richmond level unless we knock down all the houses and build gardens everywhere. So. What do you see as the biggest causes of poor air quality in the borough and what action will you take as mayor to reduce 
levels over the next five years? We we'll start with Amwara. Um, very good question. Uh, there's so many things that we can do to. First of all, there has been totally unsustainable growth uh, in Tower Hamlets. If you look at the Isle of Dogs, uh, just recently, 16 developments have, have been approved and are going to go up. Um, so there hasn't been any strategic planning from the current administration or the previous administration. First of all, I would look at where the developments are going, who, uh, are, who is going to be in her, in, uh, uh, living in those developments, and then making sure that we have the developments uh, matching the needs of the families that reside in the borough. So making sure that family units, going back to what Rabina said, in terms of overcrowding as well as uh, units for uh, our, our teenagers. So matching the requirements of the borough's population to the needs. Um, but a lot of the traffic in this borough is not generated by residents. Um, most residents in Tower Hamlets actually don't have access to a car. Far more of it is people that are coming here to work or people that are travelling through the borough. And so as Lib Dems, we would implement a uh, workplace uh, parking levy. So for those companies that provide car parking spaces to their staff, we'd put a levy on those businesses and invest that money into cycling infrastructure um, and making Tower Hamlets a better place to walk to try and get people out of their cars. Um, we need to keep commuters out of the borough as much as possible, so we need to try and make it harder. Carrots and sticks, so better public transport, but also fewer uh, opportunities for people to park uh, and make unnecessary journeys. But uh, if we're honest about this, it'd be very easy to say that it's just about commuters, because it's also about <laughs> local residents driving around the borough uh, and using their vehicles and we need to reduce people's reliance on motor cars through a better environment, better walking environment, better use of cycles. We need to make sure that we're building the right things, so building this pedestrian and cycle bridge between Rotherhive and Canary Wharf, and not building a tunnel, which is basically a trap for evolution uh, at Silvertown, between Silvertown and um, North Greenwich. To expand the ultra-low emission zone much faster and much further, uh, at the moment it only covers central London, the same area as the congestion charge, um, it should be, at the very least, covering the, um, the north side circular, so inner London area, uh, and eventually we want to see it expand by the end of this sort of mayoral, um, London mayoral uh, sort of term, by 2020. I, I think like never before, we all have to come across <coughs> together through all the political um, spectrums here to address the serious nature of air pollution in Tower Hamlets because we have one in three children who live in poverty. We have the highest growing number of young people living in this borough. We have an older generation who are growing and it is our responsibility as policymakers to address that. One of the reasons I talk about this is that it is vehicle traffic, but it is also addressing people's behaviour. Um, the fact that we have, as a council, we can set precedents to be that role model. The fact that us as the council have to set that example, the fact that we need to address our own polluting boilers in our own offices, in our own schools, to make sure that they are quickly removed as, um, as soon as possible. And that's one of my pledges in there. But it's also working with developers, making sure that they provide electric charging points. So we would introduce 300 to 500 charging points as well. We have to address the fact that many car drivers are also drive diesel cars. We've got to look at low emission zones look at the way we can build that infrastructure and build the sustainable developments that we need in the um, borough. Our question was really about um, at when we really feel like women are, are agents of change within the community. How would you go about in empowering women's voices with, in environmental decision making at borough level? Yes. Um, well, part of it is getting more women involved in general. Um, so looking at um, when we run um, events or whatever it is in order to engage with the community, um, do we do them in a way and at times that uh, mean that women actually want to engage with them? Um, we suffer from that as political parties um, and just trying to make sure that we do a lot more to make like spaces comfortable for people that we're far more welcoming um, and trying to engage with people in that way, doing a lot more outreach uh, to try and get people to come along to things um, and actually making sure that people know that it matters and that it actually has an impact. Um, it's obviously a good, you know, people tend to come along to things, uh, they make a decision and then it never actually goes anywhere. So making sure we go back to people uh, with those kinds of stories. So yeah, those some of the things that, that we would do.
So um, I think the way you design your consultative arrangements is pretty important because you know some some approaches will attract different bits of the population from others, and so you need to reach out and make sure you're getting representative voices. Uh, the other thing, I mean, uh, this is a, an issue which is pretty vitally important across a whole number of fronts, but one thing I'd emphasize it is that my party, the Labour Party, over 40% of our candidates in the local elections are women, uh, which is, I think, a lot more than any of other of the political parties. Maybe the Greens are doing okay on this. I'm not sure about the Liberals. You're, You're a 40, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. So, I tried. So, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So getting representation and making sure that you mandate that and ensure that you get representative voices from across the community, that changes the way in which you formulate your policies and the perspectives you have. I think, it, as everyone said, it's, it's really important to encourage more women to be, to be standing for election. It's important that they uh, are a voice in the council. Um, and I think particularly you, you talked about food growing. Um, that is a fantastic family activity um, and the disproportionate number of female um, family carers and so it's <coughs> an opportunity for women and children to work uh, on an, an enjoyable natural project. Thank you. Thank you for the question. It's not just about women becoming councillors, it's about ordinary women having the voice and it's about ordinary women being involved. Not necessarily everyone wants to be a councillor and have their voice on the council board. What we would want to do is something called an Every Voice Matters, where every voice including women, matters in the decision-making process of the council, but in particular in the question that you've asked um, about environment and how women can be connected to this. I think part of that could be through the Women's International Week, how we can ensure that environmental health issues are right at the top of the agenda in terms of addressing air pollution. The fact that when we have festivals throughout the borough, actually we can make sure that environment, uh, environmental factors are respected and women have a voice there as well. Uh, throughout the festivities we have, including the faith um, communities who celebrate it, women have a powerful voice. They are there, primarily the main carers in the home, and they should have that voice. And we are celebrating 100 years of women being able to vote. Let's respect that this year. So first of all, acknowledging that there is a problem in engaging, but also acknowledging that we have existing networks, not just environmental networks, but other women's networks and uh, networks that we have uh, have in schools, in homes. So tapping into that, so using the media like they are here today, using the local media, using the women's group to talk to and making sure we advertise widely that we're having. And actually my family are all food growers from you know having that little kind of uh, pot on the windowsill with your cilantro and your cress to growing marrow. And I know that people are really fond of that in Tarahamas and across the London boroughs and I would look to making sure that we expand that. Secondly, this is the most important thing and I spoke about this last week, it's about changing people's behaviour. I believe in this borough that actually the voluntary sector, faith leaders, community leaders also need to come together in addressing air pollution. The air pollution that I now realise and see for the past eight years has affected children's health the, um, the family's health in terms of asthma, the increase of asthma. An example, um, back in Bangladesh, it's banned from using plastic bags, so why not look at the way that people are doing things in different countries and bring that here and address it. Um, um, well, before I became a councillor, this is really important to remember, um, the mosque imams actually went into the schools and said, um, in, in terms of um, in introducing how um, people, young people and parents um, ensure that their children went to school. They made it the children, the parents, carers' responsibilities. And that's why when I talk about faith leaders, they actually have a role to play in this. Um, and it's about getting that messages into communities to realise that addressing air pollution, encouraging more recycling within the family home, making sure that stakeholders are involved, the fact that we need woodland uh, schools in the lots of uh, primary school, but the transition in secondary school, that's where the failure begins to come down. And it's the same in walking, cycling, and looking at recycling and addressing air pollution. The, the work that's done in primary school, it falls apart when it gets to secondary school because older people, adolescents, they begin to realise, well, actually, I don't want to um, walk, I want to um, drive a car, and let's get the most expensive car that I can possibly get, probably a, a diesel um, engine. That kind of mindset we have to begin to address through strategic engagement process. And I want to thank our 
three organisations which have put on this hustings, which is the Women's Environmental Network, Hackney and Tower Hamlets, Friends of the Earth, and Our Health, Our Air, Our Health. Uh, so we have a round of applause for our. our